How's it going everyone? You're watching the Motorola Edge Plus disassembly. Before I begin, I just wanted to mention for such a premium device, I would have expected Motorola to have some better packaging or better presentation. Looking at the box itself and just inside overall, I mean for a thousand dollar phone, it's pretty flimsy if you ask me. You got a charging adapter and the cable and that's about it. So this sleeve over here, you got the user guide. You also got a SIM popper somewhere in here, right there. I mean, I've seen Motorola have some good packaging and boxes for phones prior to this one. Some of the red boxes on prior phones had like a soft feel or like a suede touch to it. One more thing I should mention, I mean, the overall feel of the phone itself, it feels solid, but I don't like how the borders are very like glossy feel and it doesn't feel like it's metal or that aluminum feel you get. I'm not saying it's not metal, but just that glossy sheen and feel it has over it, just fingerprint magnet and makes it feel cheap, more like a plastic phone. Hopefully the phone itself isn't. So let's get into it and see how this phone is built and see how easy or difficult it will be to repair this phone. So like always, make sure to remove your SIM tray first. Next, go ahead and heat the back plate up so you can loosen up the adhesive underneath and pry it off using a plastic pry tool. Yeah, just to let you guys know, Getting the back plate off is definitely not an easy task. It's got a lot of adhesive underneath it. Some strong adhesive too. So here's your back plate, it's made of glass, has no flex to it. Once you're able to get your back plate off, you have 16 Torx 4 or T4 screws you need to remove. All right, once all the screws are removed, we can lift up and remove the covers. So here's the top cover, you have some antenna lines running through it, these gray lines. You also have your, I believe it's your NFC antenna over here. Here's the back where your earpiece speaker is. It's a fairly large one. Let's go ahead and disconnect the battery cable. Once that's disconnected, we can go ahead and disconnect the rest of the cables. There are three wire cables we need to pop off as well. Let's pop off that millimeter wave high band 5G antenna. Here it is. Now there's a copper heat transfer tape that runs all along the main board over here and right over the battery, also underneath the wireless charging coil. We're gonna have to peel that off. Here's our copper tape. Now we're gonna disconnect the TOF sensor. We have another 5G antenna on top over here, we have to disconnect. Next, we have to disconnect the cable for the power and volume buttons over here. There's a yellow tape covering the connector. Let me peel that off. Once you peel up that tape, there's a white lock or latch that you have to lift up. So it releases the cable, and then you're gonna pull it off, like so. We have one more cable here to disconnect. And now we're gonna disconnect the front-facing camera. Here's a better look at that. All right, so once all those cables are disconnected, we have two T4 screws we need to remove. One's located right here, and one underneath this cable right there. Now we can lift up and remove the main board.
Here's a better look at your main board. And here's the back side. Man, there's a lot of thermal paste on this guy. You also have thermal paste underneath the main camera, the 108 megapixel one. You have a thermal pad underneath the other one. In order to remove the cameras or disconnect the cables for them, there's one T4 screw located over here in the corner, holding down the metal plate that's covering the connectors. Once you remove that screw, you can just pry off this metal plate. And you'll be able to disconnect your cameras. So your quad pixel 108 megapixel camera has image stabilization as well as your telephoto camera. Here's a better look at it with the copper tape removed. Now this copper tape does have some air pockets inside around here and over here. I don't think there's any liquid inside, however. There are also a bunch of copper blocks on top of some of the chips. Here's a better look at that copper block. It's just a solid piece of copper. All right, so back to the phone itself. You have your screen cable over here, which is run through a slit in the frame. So if you ever have to replace the screen, you would have to take the back plate off, disconnect the battery and remove the main board. And then you'd have to heat the front of the phone up so you could pry off the screen. And then you'd apply your new screen, make sure you'd run your cable back through the slit and then just reverse the whole process. So we've got one more 5G antenna up here. Here's that guy. Next, let's go ahead and remove the speaker assembly. So here's your speaker assembly right here. You also have an antenna line over here running through it. Let's go ahead and disconnect these cables. We have one more flex cable here to disconnect. And we have three wire cables, pop those off. There's one T4 screw over here that needs to be removed. Now we can lift up and remove this board. So here's your charger port board. It also houses your SIM reader over here. Now I got some exciting news for those of you who are all about those vibrator motors. It looks like we got a new vibrator motor in this Motorola phone. So let's pry this guy off. So here it is. And we've got the cable for your fingerprint reader over here. It's run through a slit in the mid frame. So if you ever had to replace that, you'd have to actually pry the screen off itself. Now, as far as the battery goes, there are no easy pull tabs. So you're gonna have to just heat it up and pry it off, which makes it much more difficult. And on this specific phone, the adhesive is pretty strong. So here's your 5,000 milliamp hour battery. Let's go ahead and pry off your proximity sensor. Here's a better look at that. Now there's a copper heat transfer tape that's sitting on top of a copper 3D block. So here's that copper block underneath it. And this tape sits over it. There's some adhesive underneath it. Now if you want to replace your power button or volume keys, 
There's three T4 screws over here you'd have to remove. So you could remove this metal plate and then you'd be able to remove your flex cable with the buttons. All right, so when it comes to the screen, taking it off is a very difficult process. So it's almost impossible to take it off without breaking it. Now I went ahead and applied a lot of heat and spent a lot of time gently prying the screen off. So I can show you guys the complete disassembly. So we'll see if the screen works after we put it back together. So here you have the mid-frame and you have a fingerprint reader over here. The cable runs over here through the slit over here in the mid-frame. Now even though there's some glossy plastic looking edges or borders around the phone, the mid-frame is all metal. As you can hear, it just looks to have a glossy paint around it. Now here's the screen itself. There's the cutout for the fingerprint reader over there and the one for the proximity sensor on top. So here on the other side, you can see the light comes through the screen over here on top and also on bottom over here. So overall, repairing this phone is a difficult process. Taking the back off is pretty difficult since it has strong adhesive. However, I'd say it has a pretty good build quality. The midframe itself is pretty strong and sturdy, so it should hold up to bends. But since the back and front are glass, if you drop it, there's a strong possibility you're gonna break it. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and put the phone back together. Once all the screws are back in place, apply new adhesive and put your back plate back over. Turn the phone around, power it on. And just as I suspected, once you pry the screen off and put it back on, there's a strong chance you'll damage it or it won't work. So there you go guys, hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you guys wanna see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and click on the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I upload a video. Thanks again for watching guys and I'll see you guys in the next video.